everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are doing something that you all have been asking for for a long time now we are doing another scene idea video now in the past I have done more holiday centric scene idea videos and this time I wanted to do something a little bit more universal for the whole season because let's face it sometimes the holidays are freaking busy and you do not have time between errands and family stuff to have time for like a good nice BDSM scene so this is going to be applicable for January February whatever it's cold where you live I want to give you all some warm and romantic cozy scene ideas because I've been talking a lot lately about stereotypes in BDSM and how people think BDSM is all very dour and mean and like miserable and it doesn't have to be. So if you're more on the romantic, snuggly, cozy side as I am, these scene ideas should be a good fit for you. And if you are someone that is more of like a hardcore masochist, you're like more of a cold sadist type, I would still listen to these because if you're dealing with a brat, sometimes giving them the scene that they don't think they want can do a lot for their attitude. It's a real attitude adjuster when you're like, hey, I'm a brat and I need to be beat up and be mean to me. And you're like, I'm not going to be mean to you. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> Just throws everyone for a loop. So bratting aside, let's get into some of these ideas. So number one, and I love this one as a starter because it's really good for role play, is to be an actual blanket burrito. The most recent BDSM 101 video I did was about mummification. And I wanna keep bringing it up because I really do think people overlook this. And if you're a little, if you're a pet player, this is a really good idea for you. Because oftentimes with bondage, people think, oh, we gotta have all this equipment, we gotta have rope, we gotta have, I, I don't know, like, suspension cuffs, we gotta have chain, like, yeah, it takes so much time. What if I told you, with just the blankets you already own, you could do a really nice bondage scene. And what you do is you swaddle them up really tightly in a blanket, like in an actual human blanket burrito. And then maybe you have them sit next to you by the fireplace or in front of the TV. And you just focus on being like warm and snuggly. And maybe if you're really into bondage, you put some like really nice big straps around the outside of the blanket and you lock them in there. You have them wear a gag, wear a blindfold. You can get anywhere in this scene you can get anywhere from you know very light kind of cozy swaddling abdl-esque play all the way over to like heavy bondage and sensory deprivation which is why i like this it's very versatile depending on what you like and i think people would expect maybe oh this would be really boring this would be too much and honestly like i said the holiday time can be so busy and so overwhelming that it can be a relief to do a scene where you have permission from your partner essentially to just sit there and do nothing and just be with your thoughts. It's basically like being in a free, like one of those sensory deprivation tanks. Like <laughs> you're basically doing that, but it's free, you know? And so I really love this as a good place to start. It's very simple, very versatile. Let's go ahead and move on to the second one, which is something I'm really into and I am shocked. I have never brought this up before because we've talked about tea service, cigar service, dinner service. What about hot chocolate service? I just did this the other day and I think it's really wonderful in the holiday season to maybe spice up something that could already be part of your routine, right? Like maybe you get your partner their coffee in the morning or you make them their drink in the evenings. You could also do this with something like hot chocolate because you might think, oh, hot chocolate, it's just you get a little powdered pack and you put, you know, water in there, you microwave it. And for any Europeans or like people from the UK listening to this, you are horrified by this description. But you know, if you grow up in America, what you usually get is like a little instant packet and then you put some water in there, you put it in the microwave. And that's all you get. If you're lucky, you put some milk in there. But that, that's really all we have. But you can really elevate this and make it into something special. You can make it on the stove top over a long period of time with like a really nice high quality milk. You can make your own whipped cream. You can have a tray with like really like nice luxury marshmallows, homemade marshmallows. Again, if you're more of a cook, you can do that too. And you can make this sort of 
tea service-esque where you have a serving tray, you have like a nice silver carafe of the hot chocolate and you put out for your dominant partner, you put out all of the little different things they might want to add. Maybe a little bit of peppermint schnapps, maybe you've got marshmallows, maybe you've got chocolate syrup to put on there, maybe you've got some other flavoring agents, maybe a little shaker of cinnamon if you have a little bit more of like a spicy hot chocolate. You can even do a selection of different types of hot chocolates, right? Because there's all kinds of luxury hot chocolates out there. You can have just plain hot chocolate, you can have mint, peppermint, caramel, white chocolate, you could any like cinnamon, like spicy hot chocolate, you got all different combinations out there of different flavors with hot chocolate. So you can really make this into a wonderful intimate service experience that's much more than just, you know, putting something in the Keurig or microwaving something. You can really elevate this into a loving service act and you can enjoy it yourself as a submissive after you have prepared the dominant or the top their hot chocolate while you enjoy an evening together, relaxing, watching a movie. It can just be the hot chocolate or it could even be something you do after another scene, right? Like maybe you have like a really, really heavy impact play scene and then afterwards, as sort of part of your aftercare, you do this kind of service and that can be a really nice end cap for people that are motivated, even in things like impact play, with serving their partner. And speaking of impact play, the next one that I want to suggest, I have named the rosy cheeks spanking, right? Because in the cold weather, you know, our cheeks, they get all flushed. And sometimes we want our cheeks on the bottom to match the ones on the top, okay? And this one I really like if you are used to more heavy, like quick impact play, like if you do a lot of like cold caning, you do things that are kind of more intense and, and like very just abrasive is the word that comes to mind. This can be a nice, different feeling emotionally and also sort of a challenge, right? Because the idea behind this is you're doing a spanking and if you want to, you could do role play costumes, you could be wearing your Christmas pajamas, you could be wearing a onesie, you can do any kind of role play alongside this that you want that makes sense for your relationship. You could be dressed up like Santa's helper, getting a spanking from Santa because you missed, like, you know, we missed a house and it was your fault, like whatever, you can do you can do whatever you want for this role play wise depending on what makes sense for your brain and the season and whatever but you know you do a spanking but you're really really focused on not necessarily leaving any bruises and really developing a nice all over even redness you know you want you want to you want to have more of a rotisserie chicken technique with this you're not even all the way around so with this you start the spanking but instead of it being like really hard and like disciplinary right away where it's like you did something bad we're gonna do 10 spankings this is more about starting off very soft very slow you know just really building things up having it be not necessarily gentle per se but having a lot of warmth very slowly dialing up that temperature slowly dialing dialing up the thermostat of your scene and maybe you start out closed for example and then you take the clothes off and then you do more of a bare bottom spanking after you've done a warm-up over clothing spanking and then you just slowly 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 keep increasing that intensity and from what I've discovered reading about this and from my own experiences is that doing a spanking in this way is very relaxing it's very not cathartic but it is just a stress relief almost or like similar to getting a massage where it is painful yes but it's also like just you you can melt away into the sensation of doing a spanking where it's not about achieving a bruise it's not about taking as much pain as possible and as a masochist as a submissive even having permission in the scene to not just try to endure as much as you can, not try to get the prettiest marks possible, but just having that intimate experience with your partner and working on just like, hey, we want to have a good, long, slow scene. And the point is here, you want to stretch out this scene for as long as you have time for and really see how long you can go and how deep you can go with this play. It's about the depth, not the intensity so much. So after that, the next thing that I want to say is sort of along the same lines here, but snuggly warm sensation play and I like to talk about sensation play because I think it's a bad rap as like being for beginners being boring not really being that exciting but I really think sensation play is overlooked yes but is such such a good thing to do as an alternative to maybe your usual routine of like 
really heavy impact play, heavy bondage, doing things that are more intense maybe. Doing a sensation play is a really, really good way to connect romantically and emotionally with your partner because you can incorporate the whole body into doing it because when you do something like impact play or bondage, right, you gotta avoid the nerves, you gotta avoid the joints and the neck and the face and you go in the safety, 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 all over the place. And, you know, sensation play, you do have to be worried about these things, but you can really make use of the whole body from the tips of the toes to the tops of the scalp. So for snuggly sensation play, this might include, you know, an intimate massage. It might include, you know, hot oil massage on the scalp or a foot rub, feather ticklers, you can do things like you have um, uh, like metal spoons maybe or metal chopsticks. You can warm those up in hot water and then use them over the body. If you have more massage equipment, maybe you have like hot stones for a hot stone massage. And this can definitely veer into painful territory. It's not meant to be painful per se, but certainly like I've been to a salon where I've gotten hot stones and they are, they are too hot, let me tell you. So you can have this verge more into a pain sort of territory, but it can also just be about, you know, feeling warm and layering on those warm sensations, starting off with maybe some warm coconut oil and then putting on the hot stones and then taking the hot stones off and then using a hot towel. And maybe you do some spankings with the hot towel, right? Maybe you incorporate a little bit of pain that way. And then maybe you do like a really intense, uh, you know, kneading type of massage, or maybe you have a little bit of tiger balm in there, capsaicin, or you add in a little icy hot, like something to add in a little bit of an extra layer of sensation. And if you want to make this more intense, you can contrast this by adding in cold, right? You could use things like those like cryo globes, I think what people call them, those ice globes you can get from beauty supply stores. Those are really nice if you don't want any mess. You could use ice cubes, cold milk, ice cream. If you want to go in a little bit more of like a splashing type direction, you want to add in more of like a food play edible element to it because you can also do this where it's not just sensation play, it's also like wet and messy play where it's about, you know, sort of maybe a more realistic version of that one scene from like, what is it, nine and a half weeks where, you know, he's feeding her all the food with the, you know, the marshmallows and the steak and the maraschino cherries, like whatever it is in there. There's a lot of like stuff that does not make sense together. Jello, I remember being in there. Like you can, you can do that kind of thing. And you, know, you can put whipped cream on your partner's body. You can do stuff like that, but you know, maybe do it in more of a way that makes sense where it's about both the feeling of the item, but also maybe how it tastes, especially if you want to take this a little bit more of like an erotic direction per se. Now, if you want to do a more intense version of this, my suggestion would be fire play, AKA becoming a human roast marshmallow. Uh, this is not something where I'm going to get into the 101 of how to do fire play because there are many variations on this. I'm just going to give some examples. I do have an old, old video talking about fire play, but you know, there are resources out there if you want to know how to do fire play. But this would be if you have space for it and if you know you have a dungeon where they allow fire play, you can do this here too, where you put someone out on a table and you do fire play, do maybe some fire drumming, maybe some fire cupping, some fire flushing, or maybe you've, you know, you, you put something on their skin, you wipe it away really quickly. And I really enjoy doing this during the summertime, like outdoors, but doing it outside when it's been cold outside, like maybe you were outside, you were on a walk, you had to go get the mail, something like that, but it was really cold and coming into a warm space, doing something really warm and doing something that can be impact play with things like fire drumming, but is also sensation play, also can be very intense mentally. Like, oh, this is definitely like emotional masochism for sure, dealing with, the psychology of like fire and the fear of fire can be so intense. And I think with all of this, I talk about intensity a lot, but it's never just about the physical intensity. It's also about the emotional component. Yes, the mental component and how you process that as a bottom, right? Because like in, in the first one, I'm kind of going backwards now, but in the first example I gave of like the Blanca burrito, right? That could be really, fun and caregiver-esque and gentle. It can be really intense, heavy bondage, but it can also be about fear, right? It could be claustrophobic feeling and maybe you wanna confront your claustrophobia in a scene like that and you wanna be able to sit with 
feeling that feeling of being completely encased in something and not being able to get free or maybe with the sensation play right like maybe you hate having your feet touched and you know having somebody tickle your toes with a feather tickler or give you a warm oil massage on your feet is like you dealing with the discomfort and how intense and humiliating it might be for someone to be handling your feet so i really just want to point this out to say like Really, no matter what your motivations and kink are, there's a way to make a lot of these scenes work with your dynamic, with your motivations behind kink. So moving on, let's talk about bondage again, because I love bondage and it's a great suggestion here. And what I really like as an idea is, <laughs> okay, I have to make a confession here. I've been watching a terrible TV show called Outlander and they have a lot of intimate scenes in front of a fireplace in that series and this very much gave me this idea of like okay taking the genitals out of the equation what can we do with bdsm kind of using that very romantic wintry element to it and i thought it would be really really nice to do bondage in front of a fireplace and if you don't have a fireplace this is what i would do instead because i've done this before you have a space heater and then you have like a laptop or a tv where you have like one of those like fake 24 hour like fireplace live streams going it's not exactly the same but it gets you know if you were in theater of the mind and you were just going along with what is presented to you and you're willing to have a little bit of a suspension of disbelief this will work really well for that so bondage in front of a fire where you're focused on being like warm and snuggly you've got your thigh highs on you've got a cute little sweater you know you're doing a bondage scene but it's also about being warm and cozy and i think this is great because I, I can't speak for anyone but myself but being cold during bondage is one of my least favorite things i hate it i hate being cold i hate being naked and cold and this is about having that warmth having that intimacy and having that connection and maybe a different place than what you are used to doing like maybe you normally do bdsm in the bedroom or at a dungeon and doing it maybe in your living room in front of a fireplace that's like a different setting that's new and maybe that changes the way you approach the scene maybe the way you do the bondage feels different maybe it's a little bit more romantic a little bit more sensual instead of maybe where you do it at a dungeon it's more performative more extreme more about kind of getting the audience's attention as opposed to this which is a little bit more stripped down a little bit more basic maybe but you are enjoying being in front of the fire and you know if you want to take this in a little bit more of an intense direction you can do sort of like a simulated spit roasting this might seem a little extreme i'm gonna call this like half of an extra idea because it's pretty different but you know there's a lot of people out there that have fantasies about spit roasting and we've talked about that on this channel before when we have reviewed various bdsm medias but some people are into the idea of spit roasting and if you tie someone up in a hog tie you pop a little blindfold on them and you put them you know not in a dangerous space away from the fire but enough to feel a little bit roasty toasty get a good sweat going and, you know make sure it's rope you're okay getting a lot of sweat on if you're doing rope for this because it could be cuffs it could be chain it could be whatever you want if you're putting them next to a fire i would not have it be an easily meltable or flammable material so keep that in mind and this is where it's really good to add in more of that verbal role play of what you're gonna do to them what's gonna happen really getting into your partner's head about what's going on in the scene so on the complete opposite end of the spectrum from a human spit roast that's being simulated let's talk about a nice date night idea so my next idea is for an ice skating kinky date night because maybe this is me but i really feel like ice skating out of all the like winter activities you can do is perfect for a ds relationship especially if you are not used to skating or like maybe your dominant partner knows how to ice skate but you don't because the idea here is like as a submissive partner you have to hold on to your dominant's hand the entire time and they lead you around the rink right this is the kind of thing you can do where if you want to be able to go on a date but also do your beauty some a little bit in public without being noticed this is a really good way to do that i do not advise you do this like in i don't know like love and leashes there's a bunch of examples of this where you're like 
cuff together or something because if you fall over you don't want to take the other person with you and it would be embarrassing to reveal that you've been handcuffed together in like a public skating rink talking to the submissive and telling them like all right little one like you have to hold my hand the entire time they're on the ice skating rink and you can't leave my side and i'm gonna lead us around this could be more of a caregiver thing it could be more of a general ds thing i think this would be great for littles and pets to do because oh my god ice so interesting so exciting it's something that I think like a lot of little kids love to go ice skating. So if you're little, I feel like this is a great way to have sort of an outdoor little-esque activity that matches with the season. And then afterwards, right, you can get hot chocolate together. Maybe you serve your partner the hot chocolate or maybe when you're getting your ice skating boots put on, maybe as the service sub, you're putting on your partner's boots for them. Or maybe because they're your caregiver, they're putting on the boots for you. So even the kind of elements around what you're doing with the ice skating can be little acts of beauty and little acts of service in terms of like who's paying for the tickets, who's putting on the boots, who's getting the snacks afterwards, right? All of that can contribute to having more of a DS date night, so to speak. And also with ice skating, I think if you do want to make this more explicitly kinky, you could do things like wear a harness underneath your sweater, because one good thing about ice skating with this is you're usually wearing a lot of layers, right? You're wearing long johns, you're wearing maybe a nice sweater, you're wearing a winter coat over that, ear earmuffs, you're wearing, uh, you know, you're wearing... I don't know why I can't think of the word. I keep wanting to say snow cap. You're wearing like a beanie or something. You know, I've got like a nice winter hat on and that could be a really good way to add in like little extra elements, right? Like maybe you have your partner put in earplugs underneath their earmuff. So that way their sense of hearing is taken away and they have to be more dependent on you. And this, I wouldn't do this if you're at a really bu busy ice skating rink, but you know, if it's like a slow day, you got like a handful of people there, it's like four or five people or something, you're not gonna run into anyone and they're staying really close to you. That can be a good way of having to surrender control to your partner because your hearing is gone or they could be wearing bondage underneath your clothing because it could be totally obscured by all of of those layers or it could be as simple as when you're ice skating around right maybe as you're ice skating you know you lean in close because you're you're two you're two cute lovers and you're out on a little ice skating date and then as you are going around the ice skating rink they're telling you like maybe a kinky fantasy that you have or maybe what you're gonna do when you go home later or how you mess something up maybe they have rules about how you're supposed to skate and whenever you mess up you're gonna get punished for it later when you get home you're gonna get a spanking when you get home from it so again it can really go in a lot of different directions. Now, my final suggestion for a warm, cozy scene idea is a dinner service date. I have a lot of service-oriented suggestions on this, but I think it just really works with the theme. So for this, what I think is a really great thing to do is, you know, you get into a routine, right? You order out a lot, you make dinner, you get something quick on the way home from work. I think having a mindful date night at home where maybe you cook together, maybe if you're a service sub, you're making all the food and preparing it and presenting it to your partner. Maybe you both are too busy, right? Like maybe you got kids, you work long hours, you're in school, you got this. Just order something nice from a nice restaurant you normally wouldn't treat yourself to and, and keep that with the spirit of the scene you're trying to do. You know, make sure you have the table really nice and set, right? You know, you've got all the different forks, you've got the plate, you've got like a, a nice napkin, you've got all the glasses lined up. Like just put a lot of mindfulness into making it an intimate, special experience. And even if you don't have a dining room table, even if you're doing this at the couch, you know, maybe get a nice service tray for it, get some nice cutlery, get some nice dinnerware, right? Get some nice plates for it, where even if, you know, you don't have access to everything you would do, do ideally for this, you can do it in a way that's still mindful and still special. There's always a way to modify it for your living scenario. And with this, the idea that I have in my head for it is like, your dominant is telling you how to do every direction. They have the recipe and they're telling you every step as it as it is you might not even know what you're making it's a surprise at the end but they're telling you okay chop the onions you know peel two carrots right they can be as vague as they want they could do a little great british bake-off inspired like your directions are like 
make a casserole, <laughs> you know, it can be very vague, but it can also be very, very detailed, depending on if you like more of that sort of overbearing, very precise boss kind of approach, or if you like more of a hands-off service approach where you are trusted with doing things correctly. And that can be a really fun, sort of unique way of incorporating DS into your service stuff is to have your partner dictate everything to you and you not have control in that you didn't pick the meal, you didn't pick how to make it right. Like maybe you have opinions on how you should peel a potato, but they're gonna tell you exactly how you need to be peeling it. But in any case, you make the food, you serve it, and then you sit under the table. If you're sitting on a couch, maybe your partner is on the couch and then you're sitting on the floor next to them. And then maybe they're eating the full meal and then you don't eat until they're done eating or they feed you pieces out of their hand underneath the table or you just, you know, you curl up next to them, you have your head rested against their leg and you just, you enjoy having this intimate special moment together where maybe they pet you occasionally or give you compliments. Maybe you are under the table the whole time, right? Maybe you order them a really expensive meal from their favorite restaurant and you have to sit under the table blindfolded, you know, nose plug in, ear plugs in, you know, maybe just leaving your mouth open with like a really drooly gag. And then maybe you don't eat beforehand, you know, talk about that. Eating stuff can be complicated. Maybe you just have to hear them eating and have the smells of the cooking and the really nice food you spend a lot of money on and not being able to eat any of it and dealing with that denial and that control. And maybe they use you as a footstool under the table too, right? Like maybe your service isn't over when the meal's over. Maybe the whole time the meal is going on, you are having to be a footstool. Or maybe it's a humiliation thing, right? Maybe they only deign to feed you scraps from the table. And after they're done, you have to be on the floor and lick the plate clean or eat the crumbs off of the floor when they drop them, you know, whatever, stuff like that. Again, there's so many varieties to this. I think that's where I'm gonna end this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I would love to know your ideas for themed scenes for the winter season, warm, cozy, romantic scenes, if that's what you're into. Let me know what you think about these in a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever done scenes like this before yourself? What do you think? Let me know. If you did enjoy this, if you've not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you wanna support what I do, the best you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.